There's a truly unique program at the Houston Medical Center in which students simultaneously earn medical degrees and masters in engineering from Texas A&M. The idea behind the InMed program is to create a physician who will invent new and ultra-modern medical devices. You'll hear from some of our students and their teachers. I'll be in Studio 2 with Dr. Rod Pettigrew, head of InMed and an extraordinary man with an amazing personal story to tell. Also in the show, we'll change gears to learn about how a small community uses autonomous vehicles to get medications to people who have trouble getting around. All this and more on this episode of Around Texas. The Texas A&M University system is like no other in the world. Across our great state, the system is home to 11 universities and eight state agencies where our people learn, teach, save lives, and make the world a better place. In our new show, you'll meet these people, you'll see where they work, and you'll experience what makes Texas and the Texas A&M system so special. Welcome to Around Texas with Chancellor John Sharp. So let me start with, with the name InMed. I really like this name because, first of all, it's new. And second of all, it immediately conveys what InMed is about. It is this new convergence of two traditionally distinct disciplines, engineering and medicine. And the intent is to blend them in order to create a new kind of healthcare professional. I'm intrigued because you have physicians who have an engineering component, and there's a part of me that sees the engineering being an add-on, a benefit to being a physician. But maybe we should think about it in the opposite direction as well. It's an engineer, a physician attaching itself to an engineer and transforming that engineer into a living, breathing physician. And I think the benefit of that is going to be that we're going to get to solutions to our medical problems faster, more efficiently, and in the end, that's really going to benefit society and our health and longevity. The InMed program is, is really unique because, you know, one, you, you obviously, one of the things we talk about is getting the master's degree in engineering and the medical doctorate in four years, which is very unique. Now, how do you make that happen? Well, the way that you make that happen is the master's degree in engineering is actually focused on the design, development, and implementation of medical technologies. Uh, simply put, engineers solve problems for the benefit of society. Well, medicine has a lot of problems. So if you bring these two together, then you have the creation of individuals who will solve healthcare problems, who will solve medical problems in an effort to improve our delivery of health care. For example, if they're learning about respiratory physiology, on the engineering side, what they're probably learning about is different technologies used to diagnose, treat, and monitor patients that have respiratory ailments. Another key of this blending of the curriculum is actually viewing the, the human body as an engineered system. And so when you're learning about the structure and function of the human body or different concepts in physiology, we might actually use engineering terminology to describe those things. And so essentially, these students are becoming bilingual. That's what we want. We want them to actually think in both engineering language and medical language at the same time. I find it very invigorating to be a part of something so unique and so forward thinking. I love the opportunity that if I have an idea that I can run with it and that it may work, it may not work, but at least we have the opportunity to explore it and see if there's a better way to do what we've been doing for hundreds of years. 
And to be a part of this program, I feel like that I'm on the cusp of something that is going to change medical education from here on out. And I am one of many who get to be a part of it at its beginning. So like some people might say like, oh, a new program, maybe you should let it kind of sit for a few years before you look into it. But that just excited me because, you know, in today's world, um, I think the world's just going to keep getting more and more complicated. You know, we need innovation and innovation comes really from merging of different perspectives. The best approach that we have right now to solving problems is what is referred to as convergence. And convergence means a blending of all of the scientific disciplines and engineering. You know, one of the, the interesting things about uh, the InMed Medical School program is that, again, you know, we're trying to take a, an accredited four-year medical doctorate program and somehow wedge a master of engineering into this. There was a lot of concern about that early on, you know, because you don't want to distract away from the medical part of the curriculum. So I think the way that our medical students are different in NMED is that they're thinking in two languages at the same time. They come with an engineering background, so that they're constantly thinking of innovation and global major concepts at the same time that they're trying to learn the intricacies of the human body, which makes it rather interesting to work with them because they're constantly going, so what, to that question, and, and why do we do it that way? Why couldn't we do it this way? And that, that's why they're attracted to the program, right? Is, is basically, they've already decided, when we interview them, most of these students will say something like that, that, you know, I'm really excited about this program because, you know, I'm trained to be an engineer. I, I grew up, you know, building things, designing things, creating things. I didn't just want to let that part of my life go. And, and I was going to do it anyway, but now here's this program that's going to actually, you know, train me to, to kind of take that to the next level, but, but, but more importantly, also train me in the process of taking that idea and getting it into to clinical practice, marketing that idea. Um, and so uh, that's kind of one of the key things, I think, is, is, is uh, you know, those qualities that the students themselves have. They're, they're not part of the curriculum. You know, it's part of the student right? I don't think there's a better place to have InMed situated than in the Texas Medical Center. This is, they say, the largest medical center in the world, at the very least in America. And there's no other place where you have in a square footage area um, such high ranking institutions of learning, clinical care, research and innovation, all within walking distance of each other. I feel like that's personally been really impactful just to you know, get the classroom stuff, but then have the medical community so accessible just to just to like experience it and you know, see how the classroom applies to the real world and sort of see, see sort of the big picture of things. So it's just a, a wonderful opportunity for everyone involved to really get into the field and connect and get out of the classroom and to really see what's going on and start to apply what's going on from day one. Our goal is to train a really a new mind, a new mindset, a blended mind of a physician and an engineer. This scientific multilingual person, this person we call a physician here. That kind of mind in one person doesn't really exist right now. And that's what Texas A&M is bringing to the world that's new. Hey, Texas, your future is closer than you think. Texas A&M University Commerce is just a short drive away. Explore equine studies, music education, robotics, and much more. Discover what you can do at Texas A&M University Commerce. Affordable, accessible higher education changes lives, providing opportunities for generations to come. 
one in three students in the Texas A&M system are the first in their family to attend college. Each has his or her own story. My name is Consuelo Guzman and I am a student of the Masters of Public Administration here at Texas A&M International University. My parents are from Irapuato, Guanajuato, Mexico. My father went to elementary school um, and a little bit of the equivalent of middle school in Mexico, but my mother didn't go to school at all. Um, since my parents had absolutely no knowledge on the higher education system, I had to figure that out myself. I think because of the great population of first-generation students here in TAMU, they are amazing at helping us through that and guiding us to what we need to make sure we have all of our requirements in place. Through their support, my parents gave me the confidence to really believe in myself. And so when they arrived here in the United States, they were living in a garage for a long time and they were struggling. I look back at that and I say, I. I don't have any excuse to not succeed. Like they had everything against them and they are able to they they were able to achieve so much. I literally have no excuse. Texas A&M Corpus Christi is a destination like no other. As an Islander, you can immerse yourself in an educational environment offering more than 80 areas of study. Explore unique, hands-on learning opportunities with award-winning professors and choose from more than 150 clubs and organizations. At Texas A&M Corpus Christi, you'll earn a degree designed to impact your life and the world around you. Your island, your university. Dr. Roderick Pettigrew has both a PhD and an MD. He also is head of our new InMed program at Texas A&M based in Houston's Medical Center. InMed is the only program in the country where students simultaneously earn a medical degree in MD and a master's degree in engineering. Dr. Pettigrew likes to say we're creating physician ears who will change the world of medicine by identifying medical problems and finding original solutions. It's truly a unique program in this country. Let's talk about engineering medicine, InMed. Uh, tell us what that is, uh, how unique it is, and, and what kind of students that you have and what these students are gonna be in the world. InMed is this fantastic, unique new program that converges engineering and medicine. The goal is to create a new type of healthcare professional, one that not only understands medicine, how to diagnose and treat disease, but also thinks about ways to improve the diagnosis and treatment of disease. It simultaneously blends engineering and medicine in the same curriculum. The intent is to create this combined integrated understanding in the same mind, in the same individual, and not to have to necessarily rely on having two different people come together and sit around a table. If you have this integrated understanding in the same mind, that person is much more likely to have great ideas of how to solve major medical problems. So these students are going to be the ones uh, that invent, if that's the correct word, the technology that makes medicine more effective and, and surgery more effective and, and, and uses that technology to help in the medical field. Is that a fair assessment of it? Indeed, in fact, the whole goal is to train this new type of invention-minded, problem-solving-minded, integration-oriented physician. Is it true that these students 
have to have a patent registered in the U.S. Patent Office before you'll give them a degree? Well, we don't go quite that far, but since we are aiming to train this uh, inventor, this problem solver, we anchor that aspiration by having our students invent something by graduation. Now, invent something means developing something that's new. We would expect them to file an invention disclosure. So tell me how people react to InMed, the people that, that, that come here from all over to see what, what you're building there. Well, not only people that come here, Chancellor, and that's a great question, uh, but people that I've spoken with that I've, uh, and places that I've gone and visited, every scientist that I've talked to around the country and around the world has been uh, very enthusiastic in their support for InMed, so much so that the response that I usually get if not always get. That's a great idea, that's a fantastic idea. I wish I could go back, turn back the clock, and I would be a student <laughs> in, in med. That is the best idea I've ever heard of. Oh, that's great. Well, and you're going to fix and have a new home. Uh, we're going to complete um, sometime next year, I guess in the summer of next year, your new home for InMed. Uh, it's going to be right at the corner of uh, of uh, on Holcomb, Holcomb Drive, right there in, in, in the medical center, and so I know you're looking forward to moving into those new digs over there. In, indeed, we are, uh, Chancellor. And I got some good news for you. We've already started to move in. To move in. Yeah. That move-in process has already begun, and in fact, some of our students have begun to use that space to study. Great. And on top of that. We're, the next thing we're going to build is a, is a high-rise dormitories for in-med students, Prairie View nursing students, and, and, and our folks in the, in the medical center. There, as you know, there's no place in the medical center for the, those students to live. Uh, they have to live off campus and sometimes not so good uh, places. And so we're real excited to, for, for the Aggie students to be the first ones uh, in those new dormitories when they're built. Uh, and I couldn't agree more that that would be fantastic because not only will it provide physical housing for the students in a building that's immediately adjacent to the building that has the classrooms and the educational facilities, but it also begins to create this sort of community and a bit of a innovation hub where students can not only study but live and socially interact with each other and that's when discovery really starts to take place when you have students talking to each other having these spontaneous conversations uh, ideas pop out when you least expect it particularly from students that all have this new kind of mindset well, within this one mind, you have this blended understanding of the physical sciences and the life sciences. I would expect that from these students, we'll have many more inventions and ideas about how to improve uh, and, and meet the challenges, challenges that we have in medicine and healthcare. More eureka moments, as I call them. More aha moments. Well, Rob Pettigrew, we are Awful proud your parents raised you as they did, and we are even prouder uh, to have you as part of the Texas A&M system and as head of InMed uh, in Houston. We know it's going to <clears throat> be a, an amazing thing for this country, and you're going to produce students that do amazing things for this country and the world. So thank you for being a part of Around Texas as well. Thank you, Chancellor. And through InMed and the marvelous students that we have, the wonderful teachers that we have, the great vision that you and your colleagues at Texas A&M had to actually institute a bold, new, innovative, forward-looking initiative like InMed is just marvelous and wonderful. I'm honored, proud, and delighted to be a part of it. And I really look forward to delivering on the vision 
of InMed, which is one of healthy longevity for this planet. Thanks, Dr. Pettigrew, and we'll be right back. Tarleton Texans know how to get things done. From building businesses to transforming classrooms to evolving scientific understanding, as a Tarleton Texan, you gather more than knowledge. You gain know-how. Discover what makes us different and why we may have the perfect place for you. As students, as graduates, and as leaders, Texans know how. Our passion guides us. Our traditions unite us. And generations of Aggies have changed the world. Forged in gold, we stand ready to serve. We are Texas A&M. This van has the features of autonomous driving and the telemedicine system. So what we aim to develop is taxi plus telemedicine two-in-one service. When you're ready, you just turn around and face the screen. We developed this van so that we can make the best technology of autonomous driving and telemedicine system deliver those services to the small underserved communities and rural areas. So the best technology serving the people who need them the most. In smaller communities, it's harder for them to get a healthcare system going up. It's harder for a small community to support a hospital or just a normal clinic. The infrastructure to build the building and have the doctors on site, it's not very easy for small towns. And so this driverless car brings telehealth directly to those people. So it's, it's basically a doctor's office on wheels. Nolanville is a small town with uh, a little bit over 5,000 people. It is one out of 16,000 small communities in the U.S. with a population of less than 10,000 people. So it's a very typical small community. America is a great place if you are a car. If you don't have a car, you are basically stuck. This is especially the case for people who live in a small and rural areas, especially people who are uh, older adults and people who have disabilities. Another problem is the access to healthcare. We picked Nolanville uh, because this is the ideal uh, town for us to experiment with this idea. Can we bring taxi and telemedicine together and deliver it to people there? We want to turn small towns like Nolanville into a smart town, and we do it one at a time. Many of us have used the Uber or Lyft app, like you call for a ride. So for us, we have an app, Endeavor Ride app. You'll have two options at first. You'll have a doctor or a ride. So you can ride in it like an Uber, or you could call for a doctor can see where the van is, how long it's gonna arrive at your place. So um, it is, um, yeah, that's, that's basically as uh, simple as two big buttons in the app. <laughs> Telemedicine is now becoming increasingly important, especially after the pandemic of COVID-19. We surveyed people with disabilities and uh, majority of them do not have a full trust of this technology yet. So having a person in the van and provide a service when it is needed will uh, mitigate the perceived risk and then will make people more comfortable. Once you're in the van and you're ready to meet with the doctor, um, you'll be conferencing with him um, or her over a computer, just like Zoom, which many of us are used to today. And you will be able to have other tools like blood pressure monitor to take uh, your blood pressure. 
We have a temperature gauge to um, take your temperature. We can also check your heartbeat uh, through a Bluetooth device. You'll hold it up to your heart and breathe in and the doctor will hear it on uh, his end through his headphones. And so there's a lot of tools that we're able to add to the van where the doctor can check your vitals from a distance. The biggest role that I've played is with um, the curtain on the back end of the van. By adding the curtain, we're able to create almost um, just a little space on the back end of the van for people to be able to conference with the doctor thanks to an arm that swivels to the back for the computer to reach the back so that you can be in a wheelchair in the back um, surrounded by the curtain and then conferencing with the doctor. Okay, coughing and the runny nose. I saw their temperature is okay. It is an excellent example to show the students uh, that this is what we need to do. We break the boundaries and we push things forward. We innovate, we break things, we fix things, and then we tackle problems and we creatively come up with solutions. We should not aspire to make a living. We should aspire to make a difference. I think that's, that's what I, my basic, my passion is about. You graduate from a and you are an Aggie. And the Aggie selfless service is very important. And so this is a service that we provide to communities. I will not stop. Nolanville is only the first community um, for us to work on. We're going to bring autonomous. We have already brought autonomous service and uh, telemedicine service to the community. And we want to improve the service um, and then continuously improve it. And then um, and in thousands of other communities are waiting for us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you Around Texas. Around Texas with Chancellor John Sharp is underwritten in part by Sarah and Ross Perot Jr.